All right, I think we are on YouTube now, YouTube Live. So hello to everybody out there. All right, I think we are on YouTube now, YouTube Live. Hey, Greg, do you want to hop onto YouTube live and see? I think we're um, broadcasting live there, but do you just want to double check for me? Awesome. And I had I muted it on my end so I wouldn't get any echo. Would you make sure that the audio is coming through as well? Awesome, Greg. Thank you. Um, and Greg, also a couple of things I was thinking about, you know, I mentioned if you want to respond to any questions in that chat box. Um, but then if you wanted to put the post webinar survey link as well um, in the YouTube uh, chat, if we think about it, if not, it's not that big of a deal. Um, Patricia, you are welcome to go to YouTube. It's our YouTube live channel. Um, we Zoom doesn't let you cap your registrants. So we have like 500 people registered for this webinar, even though it's only 100 person capacity. Um, so if you want to go to YouTube and clear up a spot in the room, I tried to give that link out to everybody so that everybody that wasn't able to get in the room uh, could access YouTube live. But um, it's up to you. You can stay in the room or you can go to the YouTube live link. And I'll go ahead and put that in the chat box as well. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for checking in. And so everybody, yeah, if you'd like to go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat box, um, we'll get started in about six or seven minutes. Um, so we would love to know where you're coming from uh, and also what kind of librarian you are. I'll go ahead and get my slides up so you can see that. Um, but yeah, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, we would love that. Oh wow, Jennifer, you are a solo librarian. That is a uh, that is quite impressive. Wow, another solo librarian. So I'm fully anticipating that you'll have to uh, stop viewing the webinar at some point to uh, go and check a book out or or answer a question for somebody. Oh, somebody from Tracy Cole from Spanish Fort. I'm from uh, South Georgia and I went to Alabama. So it's good to see some fellow Southerners in here. Courtney, another solo librarian, wow.
Very cool. Wow, we have a huge crowd today. That's awesome. Big crowd. Wow. And Kevin, I see some familiar names right now. I see a couple of librarians that are here, even though their library is closed. That's some dedication to professional development. I'm the branch manager with only a part time clerk. Wow. Anytime I ever feel bad for myself and think about how busy I am, I'll think about all those solo, solo librarians out there. <laughs> so uh, we'll probably ask this as a poll question or later, uh, but while, while we're kind of waiting, has anybody already started planning for their 2019 summer programming? Of course, you, of course you all have. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we're, I'm excited to get some feedback from you all as well. Um, we have this cool opportunity uh, to be able to provide a lot of professional development training. And it's kind of, I'm not going to say open-ended, um, but we have a lot of opportunities. And um, we're meeting with NASA in a few weeks. Um, and they're giving us funding so we can work with them on what we need. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I'm excited to hear from you guys some ideas of content we could cover, um, NASA resources we could ask them to produce for you all to kind of support the 2019 summer reading. So it should be a really interesting webinar, a little bit outside of our normal scope today. Oh, and everybody, I should say, um, I'm getting so many great chat answers. Um, make sure when you are chatting, uh, there is a two uh, box. And it would say all panelists. And you want to change that to say all panelists and attendees. Um, and I'll repeat that a few times because um, it is a little confusing, but I want to make sure um, that everybody's able to, to view what you're saying. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, I just had somebody email me looking for the link, but I'll have to shut down, shut that down pretty soon. Oops. All right, everybody. So welcome. And I think we'll go ahead and get started um, with the Zoom. You're screen sharing, so it's kind of like, it's kind of meta. You're not sure if you're screen sharing your screen share. Um, but my name is Brooks Mitchell and I am the Education Coordinator 2 here at the Space Science Institute. Um, and we're gonna be joined today by Luke Kralik. Luke, did I say your last name right? I haven't asked you that. Nope, Kralik is correct. Awesome. <laughs> of, the, uh, of CSLP, we're gonna be talking about the 2019 summer reading theme. Um, so for those of you, if you've never used Zoom before, it can be a little confusing, but you all are um, in the attendee view, um, so you don't need to worry too much. You can uh, customize your screen to make the layout seem a little bit nicer. So there should be, uh, the first thing I want you to do, and all of you that have found the chat 
box. You, I think you've already done this. Uh, but if you find the little chat bubble, uh, there's going to be a toolbar either at the very bottom or at the very top. And uh, it'll say things like Q&A, polls, chat, uh, participants. So make sure you found that. Uh, everybody that's utilized the chat uh, box again, that, that little notification should have popped up. Um, the second thing that I would like for you to do is when you are chatting, make sure that you are chatting to all panelists and attendees. Um, otherwise, it'll, it'll just go to me and Luke and I want everybody to be able to see. We're gonna have a lot of open-ended uh, discussion today um, about ways that we can support you all. So again, make sure that it says all panelists and attendees. Um, so like Rose, you just sent that just to the panelists and Robin, that just went to the panelists and Greg, um, that just went to the panelists. So just a heads up to make sure your message is getting out to everybody. Uh, we do have some folks joining us um, on YouTube Live right now. Uh, like I mentioned, sorry, we, we did max out at our capacity. Um, so we have a, a live stream on YouTube right now. Um, so for you folks on YouTube Live, if you put anything into the chat box, um, then Greg will bring that over and we'll get that answered on, uh, in the webinar. Um, if you need anything at any point, my email is bmitchell at spacescience.org. Um, so you can email me afterwards if you wanted me to, you know, hey, can I get that slide or can you send me that link again? Um, and so on and so forth. So let me go ahead and pull up my slide. All right. And that should be the, hopefully that's the, the good view that you're getting and not the presenter view of my slides. Um, yeah, so uh, just a heads up too, we are going to record this. This will be uploaded um, shortly thereafter, after this webinar is done. Okay, so I have a poll question for you guys. Uh, let me go ahead and launch it. And if you can't see it, uh, you need to click on the polls button in your toolbar. So I just launched it. You should see it. And the question is, how far above Earth does the International Space Station orbit? How far above Earth does the International Space Station orbit? Oh, thank you, Kevin. Michelle, that is a very cool uh, tidbit. Michelle Parker says she's from New Bremen, Ohio, about 20 minutes away from where Neil Armstrong was born. So I'm sure there's a lot of space science uh, interest in your community. That's awesome. OK. We'll give you guys about 10 more seconds to answer. How far above Earth does the International Space Station orbit? All right, and we'll close it in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, pretty good. Nobody. I thought I was going to get a lot of 4,000 answers. Um, let me share the results here. So most of you said 1,200 miles, which is incorrect. The correct answer is approximately uh, 200 miles. So I believe I read that it was uh, anywhere between like, you know, 150 miles uh, and 300 miles. And those are all very approximate numbers. Um, so yes, the International Space Station is roughly 200, 240 miles above the Earth. Uh, and the reason I bring that up uh, we just had an amazing event last Thursday uh, on NASA TV. Um, we were had a downlink with the International Space Station, and we got to talk to an astronaut up there, and she answered uh, tons of school uh, school age children's uh, questions. It was really really cool. But she talked about being on the International Space Station and feeling like you're not that far away from Earth. Um, the, I think the question was about how how bright are the stars, how beautiful is the the uh, galaxy, and everything like that. And she was like. It is cool because you're up there and you can see everything, but you're not that far away from Earth. Um, you're really kind of still still feel like you're a part of Earth. So anyway, I thought that was a cool little tidbit. Um, we will do another poll question, actually two more, um, as we move on with the webinar. Is it out of there? Okay, so I'm going to go over to the agenda for today. I'm going to do a few introduction and reminders like I normally do. Um, then Luke Kralik of CSLP is going to be speaking to you all a little bit about the 2019 summer reading program. Uh, and then I'm going to do an overview of some of our StarNet resources that might help you uh, in programming for 2019. 
uh, and, the summer, and the summer reading theme. Then after that, I'm gonna show you just a really brief little example program of what I might do if, uh, for example, the Mars InSight landing is November 26th. Um, so just gonna show you some few, you know, kind of give you an idea of how you could do some, some resources and some event planning for that. Uh, and then lastly, I really wanted to get some feedback from you all. Um, you know, I'm used to doing these webinars and talking to you, uh, but I thought this would be a great chance to get some feedback from how we can help you prepare for the 2019 summer reading. So I have some question prompts, um, but I'm just kind of hoping for some, you know, open-ended discussion. Uh, Greg, if you wouldn't mind, would you put your, let's see, would you put the uh, link bank in the chat box for everybody? Um, so we've prepared a link bank that has pretty much every link you'll need to access um throughout this webinar there we go thank you um and so you can open that up it's a pdf and you can refer to that you can't click into the screen like you can with some other operating system so when i pull up a link or something like that um you know make sure to to go look at that in your link bank and greg you might uh put that in the youtube live chat box too all right so of course, we are the Star Library Network. This is kind of a somewhat generic slide I always use. Uh, StarNet is an online professional development resource for librarians that are interested in doing STEM in libraries. Um, so that includes uh, professional development resources, uh, webinars, of course, uh, newsletters, blogs, forums, videos, and much more. And of course, it is all free. Um, so we really are planning to be the go-to resource for you all for the 2019 summer reading theme. Our STEM activity clearinghouse is part of that. Um, and that is our, uh, well, a clearinghouse of activities uh, that are all vetted by us. So, you know, we all have science backgrounds here at the Space Science Institute. Um, and we've gone, gone through and kind of curated, if you will, um, some really great activities uh, that you can do in your library. They're very library friendly. Um, and as we get ready for 2019 summer reading, I hope that you will go on if you've done one of these activities and leave a review so that other librarians can know, you know, how to facilitate it. What's the best way to facilitate this activity? Uh, what would you do differently next time? What age range was it really good for? Uh, but we'll talk a lot about that today and I'll kind of walk you through how to use this STEM activity clearinghouse. Mary, I see that you ordered Eclipse classes from our site. Yes, that's how we're, uh, the 2017 Eclipse is really big for us and we're, we're hoping that 2019 is, uh, the summer reading theme is our next big Eclipse. Okay, and then if you want to take a screenshot of this slide, this is just kind of uh, links to all of our different um, uh, valuable resources on StarNet. Um, so yeah, you can just take a screenshot because you can't click into those. I'll give you just a second. Uh, Stacy, yeah, the slides will be available. We post them on SlideShare. Um, so let's see. If you go to our um, website, uh, starnetlibraries.org slash resources slash webinars, and that link is in your um, link bank as well, that's where you can find the slides afterwards. And it'll maybe take a day or two. Um, so is anybody attending any of these two conferences, the New Mexico Library Association, um, or the Young Adult Library Services Association Conference, YALSA. So Heather, I see you'll be at the YALSA Symposium in November. Excellent. Um, Annie Holland, my coworker here, and I will be presenting uh, at YALSA on Saturday morning. You can uh, uh, go to the website, and find out more information about that. And it's kind of a long shot, but if anybody's at the New Mexico Library Association Conference, uh, we will be doing a pre-conference session there, highlighting some 2019 summer reading activities. Um, so it's the day before, I guess it's on Halloween, um, StarNet will be there um, facilitating some fun activities for everybody. Uh, yeah, if you've never heard of YALSA, I would really recommend it. I've been to a lot of conferences over the past two years, and YALSA really stands out to me as being particularly valuable, especially if you're working with teens and young children. Um, so I'm really excited to go back myself this year. Okay, so uh, I'm not one to to try and get likes and clicks and subscriptions and everything like that. Uh, but as I was getting ready and, and I wanted to link to our YouTube channel, as I mentioned, we went way beyond capacity. So I was trying to link everybody to our YouTube channel. I uh, pulled up our URL and I thought, surely there's a way we can customize our URL, you know, to be youtube.com slash starnet or something like that, uh, which is not the case. So uh, in order to get your own custom URL on, on YouTube, you need 100 subscribers. And I think we have 50. So if you want to go to our YouTube channel, 
and subscribe. We would really, really appreciate that. So we can have such, not such a long convoluted URL there. Uh, but if you do check out our YouTube channel, we have a lot of how-to videos that we're producing for specific activities on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse. Um, all of our webinar recordings get uploaded there as well. And then we also, um, you know, take a lot of mission videos um, from our friends at NASA, um, just highlighting different missions, different things you could show that are kid-friendly. And lastly, I put this kid-friendly video clips of real engineers and scientists in action. Uh, because sometimes, you know, we talk a lot about engineering and science, but to actually see people um, that a kid might think, oh, that person looks like me, you know, um, uh, that's really, really helpful. So um, especially underserved and underrepresented populations, if they can see an engineer that works for NASA, that's creating a spaceship um, that looks like them or is maybe from the same area as them, um, that's, you know, a really, really uh, big bonus. So if you check out our YouTube channel, you can find those video clips there. And I can, of course, uh, direct you after the webinar. Okay, so I think, oh, right on time. Uh, I'm gonna turn things over to Luke Kralik. Again, Luke is the organizational uh, coordinator at CSLP. Um, Luke is going to give you kind of an overview of CSLP, what CSLP is all about. Um, and I know some of you may already know, but then he's gonna go over uh, some of the, you know, a small, a big 30,000 foot view of the 2019 uh, summer reading theme. So let me just stop sharing my screen. Okay, let me just see if I can <clears throat> pick up the slides here. And I would just like to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. Uh, my name is Luke Kralik and I'm the organizational coordinator for CSLP. And essentially like, I don't wanna jump ahead too many slides, but you know, like CSLP is primarily a volunteer organization and I'm one of, we have two paid employees and I'm one of them. So I just kind of help coordinate things and make sure that things that move along. Um, so that's kind of my title organizational coordinator and, and it's, a, it's a pretty descriptive one. Um, so I think like one of the things to just, and I've already, I, I had, oh, let me see here. Oh, um, my slides are not, oh, there we go, okay. Um, so I did want to just kind of say, so like what is CSLP? You know, we're a volunteer organization and essentially our mission statement is to empower librarians to foster community. And the way we do that is by providing all the resources, artwork, um, we leverage kind of group buying power, um, and we kind of facilitate conversations, all the things, we, we essentially kind of provide a sandbox so that any library, whether you're a one person library or you have a children's department, um, you'll be able to run the best quality summer reading program that you can. Summer reading, summer learning, we try to kind of be a little bit general so that you can pick and choose what you need to kind of build um, your program. And like I said, we offer a, a programming manual containing programming ideas that contain crafts and, and different songs, and, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Um, but we also provide kind of that theme and that slogan so you can kind of be inspired so that you, you know, when you're out there, um, you know, kind of brainstorming what you're going to do for that summer. Sometimes just having a theme can really kind of help you focus. Um, the other thing we do is we do provide uh, artwork by by professional, you know, well-known uh, artists in the children's uh, illustration world. And we also provide um, PSAs. Um, so I did want to just talk a little bit about our history. So I, I've been a librarian for about 12 years or so, and I've worked in school libraries, public libraries, and, and mostly recently in academic libraries. But I helped run the children or our, our summer reading program uh, in our children's department. I'm, I'm here in Tillamook, Oregon. So just our library is about eight blocks up the street there. And I, we use CSLP materials every year, and I never knew where they came from or how they arrived. I really, in all honesty, I can remember I did, uh, you know, catch the reading bug uh, and, and, and make a splash read, uh, you know, and, and I always thought those just came from Oregon, but I think so it's important to let people know that like, when you participate in CSLP, it is a national program. Um, and we had our kind of humble beginnings in, in Minnesota, and it's just kind of grown from there. Um, right now, and I have my CSLP Today slide, which um, it's well named, I think. <laughs> but you know, like right now, we're in, uh, you know, all, all 50 states have libraries that participate. We're in Bermuda and five, uh, five island territories that participate in the program. Um, we have, uh, and I'm, I had to write these ones down, but we have 
14 standing committees and two ad hoc committees that, that make the work happen. Right now we have about 150 library volunteers from around the country uh, participating on these committees. Um, and kind of providing guidance to that whole organization is our 11 person board. So it really is a volunteer and librarian driven organization. And you know, I think that that shows in, in the materials and resources that we offer. Um, so to just kind of, you know, raise the excitement there. So our 2019 uh, program is a universe of stories and we're so excited. Uh, we're working here with Starnet. Um, they've got, you know, some good strong NASA ties and just some excellent programming materials, but like you can't really find like a, a person with a pulse who doesn't get somewhat excited about space, whether it's just exploration, just that human endeavor, or just the gigantic kind of awe of the cosmos. So like we're super excited for for, for the space theme. Um, I did want to not to diminish the 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 excitement, but I did want to just kind of plug, you know, upcoming uh, for 20, 2020, it's going to be Imagine Your Story, which has a fairy tales and mythology uh, theme. And 2021 is Tales and Tales, which is an animal theme. Uh, Win Pham will be our artist for 2020, and uh, Selena Yoon will be uh, our artist for uh, 2021. And I've seen some of the sketches as, as they're kind of developing the artwork, and I, and I think it's going to be uh, a really, really fabulous uh, presentation or artwork for, the, for those years. Um, I'm not good at doing online presentations as far as like, I, I, I was a classroom teacher or not a classroom, but a, but, a, but a college professor there for a bit. And I'm used to kind of seeing the faces of the, of the questions. So I, I tend to get more and more nervous as I go and talk faster and faster. So I'm, I'm gonna take a little deep breath here before I, I jump into the manual, but I'm gonna take a quick peek here in the chat and just see if there are any, any questions. And I'm, and I'm just seeing positive comments. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just talk a little bit about the manual. Um, so for 2020, you know, like I said, it's a universe of stories is the theme and slogan. Um, every year we gather up librarians, we hire professional writers and editors to put together a programming manual for you. Um, the manual comes in four different formats. It comes in paper, it comes on a DVD, it comes on a USB, and we do have an online option. Um, you know, I, I, whenever I kind of go talk to some of my library friends, or, or I know that when we do surveys, we ask people, well, where do you get your ideas for your summer reading? And, you know, nine times out of 10 people say Pinterest, uh, maybe a Facebook group. And I think those are really good ways to get, uh, get programming ideas. I think one of the strengths of ours is that it's written by librarians with the idea that these programs are going to be run in a library setting. I know when I look for a good craft idea on Pinterest, I do have to kind of comb through a lot of like, you know, they're wonderful ideas, the photographs are wonderful, but you know, it's, it's like a homeschool activity where they've got like three or four hours and the children are all super well behaved. And I think that kind of one of the, the eases of our programming manual is that these activities have been built with a library in mind so that you know you're getting a half hour to 40 minutes or so. Um, you're gonna have children of all different skill sets uh, and, and really just kind of helping make sure that you've got that welcoming environment and that anyone who comes into your, to your summer program for that day can participate. And I, and I think that's sort of the strength of, of our programming material, you know, building in those, uh, you know, different uh, hear, people with different hearing levels, you know, all different kinds of things like that. Um, so just to kind of give you a, a, a quick overview of what manuals we offer. I can't tell if my slides are... Okay. So we have four manuals for, for 2019. We've got our early literacy, our children's, our teen and adult. And I just tried to pull, you know, just kind of, these are the posters. And then I just tried to pull like a, a visually, it's to, like, I didn't want to just show you a page of text with programming ideas. So I went ahead and just kind of pulled what I thought was visually striking. Um, but we do have our infant, uh, infant toddlers and preschool uh, manual, which is our early liter literacy manual. We kind of structured around the idea of read, talk, sing, play, and write. Um, so all those materials, uh, all those sections will have kind of different ways to adapt that. Um, we provide a lot of early literacy tips. I know a big part, I, I my, I did a babies in the library program, which was fairly disastrous just because I, I couldn't be cool enough to sing um, 
you know, nursery rhymes in front of a group of people. I lost my cool, or not my cool, but I lost my nerve. And plus the babies, they, they seem distrustful of me. So that was, that was tough. Um, but, you know, we try to incorporate, you know, a lot of tips because a lot of the audience for, for these programs are sort of the parents. They're trying, you know, they're there because they want to have good, you know, they want, they know reading is important and they're trying to kind of pass that along uh, to, you know, to their children. So we do pro provide a lot of tips for kind of improving, you know, just easy literacy things you can do to help kind of bolster, bolster those, that, that love of reading in, in, your, in your youngest readers. Um, next manual is our, is our children's manual. And then I pulled this, this, this year we've got a aliens under, uh, aliens love underpants play, uh, a puppet play in mind. So I pulled that because that was the most striking image. And, and like, Underpants are hysterical, so I knew that that was a good, good slide to include there. Um, but in our children's manual, we include ideas for crafts and activities and games. Um, we also try to include some reproducibles for those days. You know, maybe you just run off a bunch of those for kind of some passive programming in your library there, um, just to you know kind of keep you inspired. You know, kind of take that you know when you're arranging to get all your performers lined up and make sure that the, you know, the local newspaper gets your press release. Sometimes it's nice just to have a bank of, of activities and resources to just kind of uh, draw from. Um, we also offer a teen manual. Uh, teen is just, a, a, you know, I, I love teens. Like I, I worked at a school, uh, it was a preschool through eighth grade. And every week I got to read with the, ch you know, we did a story time for all grade levels and like, Doing seventh grade or eighth grade story time is just, you know, just wonderful. They're just such a such a exciting thing. And, and I'm sure as any teen librarian will tell you, a big part of teen programming is just developing those relationships, creating that safe space. Um, and we try to provide some ideas that that you can use as a jumping off point to make sure that you can kind of connect with your teens. You've got some ideas to bring them in there. But also just, you know, these are programming ideas with just kind of general guidelines so that you know you can improvise with them and, and really let your 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 patrons kind of take take that program where it goes. Um, I just jotted down like we've got some cosplay programming ideas, some craft ideas, uh, you know, just things that you can really use to kind of help, you know, talk and, and just build those relations with your with your teen community there. Um, and finally, the last uh, manual that we offer is our adult programming. Um, I think there's a lot of room for, I mean, I know our library probably started an adult summer reading program about like maybe eight years ago, and it's just been really successful. Um, I know we, we did, I can't remember what it was, but it was, it was the water theme year. We had like a gardening slogan for the adult program. And I remember one of the book, you know, one of the ideas that was in our manual was the idea of the seed library and we still do that every year. Um, so I think that it's great to connect with your adult community. It can be a great way. I know a lot of libraries, their mission has sort of to be that community center, that place that's kind of the heart of the community. And running an adult summer reading program is a real way um, to help reinforce that commitment, um, commitment to becoming a community space. Um, this year, we've got some ideas for like, you know, how science fiction influenced real science. Um, like a big moon landing party with the anniversary of the moon landing there, that would be a really good opportunity. I mean, I would love, I, it's great. I was just at a library conference and it was great to kind of hear people kind of talk about when they saw that that happen live. Um, so I think that there's some really good opportunities there. Um, and there's also just some good ideas for displays, which I know I was, it's hard to make displays. Like I, I We've had some great, I mean, I always look forward for like band book week and stuff because I always have my displays lined up, but but we've got some good ideas. I thought one that kind of caught my eye was a uh, NASA made that, uh, you know, just sort of different foam mattresses and things that you wouldn't necessarily associate with the space program that are, that are kind of everyday products. So there's some good display ideas there. Um, so that's kind of uh, my overview of CSLP and overview of the manuals. Um, you know, I'm... I'm always available, so just send me an email um, if you have any kind of questions or if you're looking to help participate. You know, definitely CSLP is, is that is a volunteer organization, and it's our library volunteers that 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 make us great. Um, and we're always looking for new people with new ideas. Um, and I would strongly encourage you to reach out with me with any questions that you have. So th thank you. Oh okay. goodness! And someone said, "Where do we get these manuals?" Uh, so. 46 states. So if you're in any state in the in the country, um, I guess, well, I, I'm, I'm, I would try to share my screen, but I, I don't want to overstep my, my competency here. Um, 
send me an email if you're in if if you're in any state except for California, Illinois, Virginia, or Minnesota, you're a full state member and you probably receive your manuals through your state library agency. Um, if you're in one of those states that that I mentioned there, you need to sign up as an individual library. It's a $20 fee to join for the year. And then you can buy a paper manual for $20 and the online access is $8, which also gives you full access to everything as well. Um, go to cslpreads.org um, for more information or go ahead and send me an email if I, if I, because I clearly did not address a very important part of, of, of your questions there. But I, I, hope, I hope that helps a little bit. I wish I had a slide I could point to. And uh, Luke, just going through the chat box, um, not too many questions, but you all, we have maybe five minutes or so if you want to go ahead and ask Luke some questions, um, and we will do that uh, at the end as well. Uh, but somebody was saying that the reproducibles that you showed were perfect if you want to make like a summer reading tote bag. Um, it would be a really good idea for those. And then that uh, Brianna says she loves that the e-readers are intermixed. And somebody else um, mentioned that they really prefer having it on a USB as instead of uh, the print manual. And I, and then in the next few years, I'm sure we'll see more of a transition into the into the digital. But. No, definitely like the, I'm yeah, the USBs are definitely kind of leading along with kind of just the online only access. And I think a lot, a lot of libraries are finding that that very useful because it is tough. To, I mean, like when it's printed, it does feel like a whole binder and it's a lot of paper. So I would I would steer you down that path as well. Yeah. Um, no, and I did see that you know that comment about read the reproducibles make great things for library bags. One of my one of my jobs is to uh, put to put out our newsletter every month, and I'm always looking for good ideas to share. Like librarians, I mean, I know I love to hear good good ideas, and I know that if if it works in one library, there's a good chance it's going to work in mine. So I always encourage people to send me their ideas with a photo or two if you have one, because I love to share those out. And you get to kind of like show that to your library board or whatever your director, which uh, can you know gives you a little kudos there or something. <laughs> Um, and then somebody was wondering, when will the manuals be sent out? So the manuals should have shipped this week. Um, we had, it's been a little, like it's tricky to coordinate all those pieces. And I think we had some issue with the tabs and the USBs getting connected to the right thing. So we're a little bit late this year, but my understanding from my conversation on Monday was that this midweek, they should be getting out to your state uh, youth consultants. Um, and they should be distributed very soon. So I do, I do apologize for the delay. We're we're kind of late this year, but it should be it should be this week. And then one more question. Let's see. Uh, Michaela was wondering, uh, what is your seed library? Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean that I'm always talking like everyone knows just what I'm talking about. <laughs> but essentially, every like every year, if you do like a little home garden or something, you always have those extra seeds that are kind of good for another year or two. Like I know I've got cucumbers and beans and squash sitting on top of my mm -hmm. uh, refrigerator right now. And you can essentially it was we took the old card catalog box that we don't use anymore, which was the perfect size for seeds, and we just created little index cards and alphabetized them so that you could come in and drop off your old seeds that were still good for another year or two and pick up some new seeds. So it was a really, you know, and especially like vegetable and flower seeds. So um, it was just a really nice little passive programming idea. Um, we had some, you know, some diehards, some, some, uh, you know, I think the heirloom tomatoes always went really fast, you know, but it was just a nice, I don't, I, you know, it was just such an easy thing to do and, and people really liked it that, that we just continued to do it. So, um, that's what a seed library is. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, like I said, if you think of anything else, Luke's going to be joining us, you know, for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, and we can go over any, any other questions that you have. So uh, thank you so much, Luke. That was great. And we couldn't tell that you were nervous at all. So. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you to say. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so we're going to move right along to the next thing in our agenda. I did want to do another kind of silly fun poll question for you all. Um, so let me pull that up. Real quick. This is another question that came up in our downlink uh, with the NASA astronaut, um, Selena, I forget her last name, but she was from the Fort Collins area. Anyway, it was really awesome. Um, and I think I'll put a link to where you can find that on YouTube. Uh, the recording wasn't quite up yet. But anyway, let me go ahead and launch this. Which of the following animals has not 
been in space? Guinea pig, wasp, mouse, cat, butterfly, or gecko? We'll give everybody some time. I'll check YouTube live and see what everybody's saying over there. Oh yeah, so the question for you on YouTube Live is which of the following, because um, I realize it's not putting up the polls for you all. Um, so which of the following animals has not been in space? Guinea pig, wasp, mouse, cat, butterfly, or gecko? All right, we'll give you five more seconds. Again, on YouTube Live, those options are, oh gosh, now I have to remember, uh, guinea pig, wasp, mouse, cat, butterfly, and gecko. Okay, five, four, three. Okay, this is what everybody else said. It looks like the uh, majority of you all said cat or wasp. Here's the thing, this is kind of mean, but this is a trick question. All of those animals have been in space and as I was researching and trying to find animals that haven't been in space, I just kept on finding more and more and more animals that have been in space. So not sent by, what's that mean? I hope that's not mean. Uh, totally a trick question. Not all sent by the United States. Some of these animals are sent by other countries, um, but every single one of those animals hasn't at one point been in space. So um, American, some accidental voyagers, yeah, right. Uh, Americans did not send guinea pigs. I believe Russians sent up guinea pigs. Uh, wasp was one that I looked up thinking, surely you wouldn't bring a wasp into space. It's got a stinger. You got space suits. You don't want a wasp up there buzzing around. But yes, they have brought a uh, paper wasp into space. Mouse makes sense. Um, cat, I knew early on initially they had, they had sent a cat in space. Uh, they sent a monarch butterfly. I want to say that was the United States or the Japanese. I'm not totally sure though. But they have sent a butterfly into space. Uh, and then the gecko one is kind of interesting. I believe that was uh, Russians sent some geckos into space to see if they could mate in space. Um, and I guess something maybe about the zero gravity, I'm not totally sure, but then they lost contact with these geckos. So the big story, the big joke was like, oh man, there's you know geckos floating around in space um, trying to make little baby geckos and we don't know uh, where they are right now. So anyway, just a funny little tidbit there. So again, sorry about that, but it was a trick question. All those animals have been in space. So Jennifer Thornton says, we have a seed library that works wonderfully. Patrons, community members are encouraged to bring in seeds to replace those that they take. There's a binder of instructions on planting, seed saving, et cetera. Uh, we plan to add a couple gardening kits that'll be able to ch uh, be checked out as well in the upcoming year. Very cool, that sounds awesome. That's quite a, uh... Jennifer, would you send, or maybe I'll send you an email. That sounds really great. And we're doing some circulation kit programs. I would love to kind of, um, poke your brain about that a little bit. And what Amy says, I think a parrot or parakeet was sent into space. I think so too. Um, oh, they cannot drink without gravity. That's very interesting. So yes, Peg says that um, she understands that birds cannot drink without gravity. I'm not sh sure about that, but that's crazy. Now we can hope that the geckos have colonized their own planet. <laughs> uh, Michaela, says I would love a copy of the binder of instructions. Um, if you're talking about the CSLP one, um, send that email to Luke and he'll get you um, set up with that. Okay, I do wanna keep on moving right along. Um, and what my next, sorry, I'm just gonna orient myself real quick. Getting a little meta here. Okay, um, so everybody should be able to see my screen right now. Would somebody mind um, in the chat box just saying, yes, I can see your, your browser right now? Okay, great. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's weird when you're screen sharing and you can't see everything else. It's a little strange. Okay. Um, so I wanted to kind of introduce you to Starnet Libraries. I know a lot of you, this might be old hat for you. You've, you've been to our webinars before. You know our website well. You've heard the word Starnet a million times. Um, but for those of you, since we had such a big response today, I wanted to introduce you to Starnet. 
and different free resources that you can use within the website. Um, so move this toolbar down. Um, so our website, starnetlibraries.org, and the whole idea with Starnet is that it is this online community uh, where you can interact with other librarians. Everything is free. We're federally funded, so all of our um, things on Starnet are free. Um, and just kind of a central hub for librarians that want to be doing STEM in their library. Uh, so the first thing we're going to look at, let's see, uh, just kind of, if you want to join our Starnet community, which I would really encourage you to do that, it doesn't cost anything, like I said, and we only send out maybe one email a month um, or two emails a month. Um, if somebody in the chat box wants to vouch for me, that is on our mailing list. We don't send out a ton of emails. Uh, and when we do, they're oftentimes filled with free resources, right? So maybe an exhibit opportunity or a grant opportunity um, or the solar eclipse glasses, for example. Um, thank you, Katie, I appreciate that. Uh, so yes, we do, we send out about a once a month news newsletter. You have access to that. Um, and you can have access to a lot of stuff without signing up, but we really recommend it. I believe our community initially was, gosh, 100, 100 or so people, librarians, not that many. Uh, and then after the eclipse, it skyrocketed and we have several thousand members of StarNet now. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel and Heather. They say, Heather says, the email I received from StarNet is the one that I actually read. <laughs> um, Greg does a great job of those newsletters. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is go to our events page. Um, and the events page is going to be kind of your go-to hub for upcoming STEM events. Uh, so right now I see lights on after school. Um, that was recently happened or is about to happen. I forget the exact date on that. Um, and then we have our universe of stories. We'll go check that out in a minute. But then we have other events as well. So the Parker Solar Probe um, is a NASA mission that just launched, um, I guess in July or no, in August, excuse me. Um, and, oops, sorry. And so we have a landing page for that. So these landing pages are gonna be the best way to direct you right to the best NASA resources. So like here we have this uh, mission trailer um, right on the, on the homepage. And the reason that the Parker Solar Probe is, probe is still up there even though it's launched is that um, you know, it's got quite a while until it travels to the sun. So it's still a thing, you, there's still a chance to do programming about it. Uh, so anyway, you can see here, this is just kind of like a little quick highlight um, of this particular mission. The one I'm gonna be talking about in just a little bit is the InSight Mars Lander. Um, we're gonna be talking about it in example programming. And this is cool because uh, you could do a mission or you could do a program around its launch. You could do a program around its landing um, on November 26th as well. So these are our events page. Um, so anything big that's upcoming, usually I've done a webinar about this or we'll be doing a webinar. And then of course the Universe of Stories webpage is gonna be really, really important for you all. Um, now we're already launching this. We know how much you prepare in advance. Um, so we want to go ahead and get those resources out there, but that does not mean that what you see on here is all that you're going to have for the next, you know, several months. Um, we'll constantly be updating this as we get more materials uh, available for you all, as we get more resources available to you all, we'll be updating this. Um, so I did want to note, uh, if you want to register your library with StarNet for CSLP, uh, that would be really great. We're making this giant uh, year of space map, and we would love to put your library on there. And if you do that also, you'll get, you know, kind of the first access, the first uh, notification of science materials from NASA and a variety of other sources. And also, I'm not sure if you can see my highlight here, but automatic entry for a chance to win one of two free Orion Starblast telescopes. Um, so we'll be giving away, it looks like two telescopes. Um, and so if you register your library um, through us, um, you will be entered into a chance to win those. Check the chat box real quick. All right, so down here, programming resources, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail, um, but here are just a few different activities, mostly activities, and then a few really valuable NASA web pages that you could visit as well. Um, so we are, uh, we work in a cooperative agreement with NASA. Um, so they are our friends and we are their friends. And we are our coworkers, if you, you could say that. Um, so we really are, again, working with them to develop the best resources and to get those uh, resources to you, um, the library staff. So again, if you click on this register your library today, you'll go to a Survey Monkey link. It's very, very easy. You just fill out a little bit of information and we'll put your uh, little star on the map for you all. Um, so that's the Universe of Stories uh, landing page. And again, check back. Oh, very cool, Katie. That's a fun one. Katie says she's planning on doing the pocket solar system activity. Um, so check back to this landing page. As we get closer and closer, we'll be launching more um, things for you all. 
So uh, in terms of projects, you can just see some of the different stuff we're working on. Um, we're funded by NASA and NSF, not totally relevant to CSLP, um, this, this web page at least. But we're going to move over to resources because I think this is one of our really, really, really valuable uh, professional development tools. Um, and we use, so the professional development staff is me uh, and Kelly and Lacante here. Um, and we use a lot of different tools uh, to reach audiences, right? So uh, webinars is kind of something we're always using, um, a tool in our tool belt, if you will, that we're always using. Uh, but we also go to conferences. So if you're trying to find what conferences we're going to be at, and we'll be doing a session there, um, you can click on that conferences uh, button. The StarNet blog is really, really valuable. I personally don't think people check it enough because it is chock full of great ideas and it is constantly being updated. Um, so we're just looking at the most recent blog post was about AR, VR, or MR, huh? That was actually genuine. I don't know what MR is. Uh, the last one was about STEM learning in the library. Um, so yes, uh, quite a few different uh, resources there. Definitely worth reading and all of the free time that you have as a librarian. I'm just kidding, I know you have none. Um, I also wanted to point you to this community dialogues page. Let's see, this is the website. So community dialogues are something that we've developed in a few of our different projects, uh, where it is a chance for you to get really good feedback directly from your community. And we're not talking about the mayor or the city councilman. We're talking about like the people that really have a pulse on the community. So it might be like Joe that runs the hot dog stand downtown and gets to talk to everybody. Um, so anyway, if you're if you're interested in hosting a community dialogue. We have a guide, a summary, uh, media templates, everything like that, and ways to kind of help walk you through that. We really, really, really think that it's something that every library should do um, because it's such a good way to get a really good pulse on your library. Check the chat box real quick. Free time. <laughs> that's funny. Hairdressers and UPS drivers. That's great. Yeah, they do know everything. I know I tell my, uh, my barber everything. I'm going to write that down so I can use that. Multiple realities, Kevin. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Uh, and one more page I want, because I want to make sure I leave enough time for us to have some discussion in the chat. This partnership opportunities page, we are going to do a webinar um, specifically about um, two NASA partnerships that you can form that are really, really valuable. Uh, but I want to go ahead and get your eyes on this partnership opportunities, because now if you're planning on having somebody come in and partner with you to uh, deliver really great summer programming, Now's the time to start, you know, reaching out to them. Um, so let's see. If I click on this NASA one, this should take me there. Yeah. Um, so the two that I really, really recommend, um, and again, we will expand on this later. It's just not enough time in this webinar to, to really talk a lot about it. The Night Sky Network and Solar System Ambassadors. Um, Night Sky Network are, uh, it, it partners with local astronomy clubs, so it's like a, a network of astronomy clubs. Um, many of them are amateur astronomy clubs, which that should not deter you at all because amateur astronomers are awesome. And Solar System Ambassador is going to be uh, more, somewhat official NASA representation, but again, people that are willing to come out and come to your library and do programming. Now, of course, they're not always, you know, really right, uh, super close to where you are, um, especially if you're in a rural area, but you would be surprised at how much these two people uh, or these two networks, groups, organizations, whatever, uh, how far they'll travel, especially if you offer to pay for their gas or anything like that. And they are volunteers, um, so there's not really fees associated with it, but sometimes, you know, they want you to help uh, pay for gas or something like that if they're traveling a, a long way. But again, now's the time to make those partnerships and make those connections with local astronomy clubs. Um, again, we'll be kind of hitting on this a little bit more, but that is a really good chance. If you're thinking, oh, I am not a rocket scientist, well, A, you don't have to be to facilitate STEM, but B, you can get, you know, maybe not a rocket scientist, but an astronomer to your library to help you with your program. Uh, Becca, you can find the Pocket Solar System um, on our clearinghouse, our STEM activity clearinghouse. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll use that. I'll go and pull that up in just a minute. And Kevin, yeah, Solar System Ambassadors are great. Um, and yeah, again, make those connections now. Okay, so I'm not leaving myself a ton of time, but I do want to um, take you all to the STEM activity clearinghouse. Now, uh, there's some chat. People were talking about Pinterest in the chat box. And yeah, that's a great place to get ideas but you really have to sift through a lot. They're not always scientifically sound or accurate and they may not um, be great for, your, for the library setting. So the Clearinghouse has developed, well, before my time here at StarNet, 
Uh, but it is a, uh, yeah, a go-to area um, where we've curated different activities from across the web from valuable vetted resources. Um, so whether it's NASA, um, like the Society of Civil Engineering, um, the other big, you know, renowned places that we trust our activities and we've read through them and everything like that. Um, so it can be not confusing to operate, uh, but I just, it's good to, to walk you through. So um, this is the homepage of the clearinghouse that you're seeing. And right here are collections. Now our collections are gonna be like, uh, it's how we bend the activities. So if you just wanna go through every single, there's like 200 activities on here, you can hit that browse all activities. And from here, let's check the chat box real quick. And from here, you can um, sort through different things. So let's say, uh, this is a really cool feature personally that I think, let's say I wanna do an astronomy and space program that's gonna be good for, let's say early elementary. And I need it to be 20 to 40 minutes long. Let's say I don't have some time to prep, but I need it to be really, really, really cheap. Let's say I don't want to, I want to spend like five to $10 total. And so I've sorted through, you know, of those 200 activities. Now there's four um, activities that, that would be good. That would meet those criteria. Um, so it is sortable like that. If you just want to go through and use these uh, options on the left-hand toolbar toolbar, I don't know if that's the right word, but checkbox bar. Um, and then if you don't want to do all that work and you want to say, you know, I trust you guys to, to put everything in a good uh, bin or a good collection for me, go down to the universe of stories collection here. Um, so we've taking, taken activities that are in the CSLP manual. We've put them in here. We've also taken some pre-existing activities that we have on our clearinghouse um, that we thought were really, really great. Uh, good space science theme, um, kind of fit within the CSLP ideas. Um, and yeah, just, you know, cause if you, yes, you can do activities only from the manual, uh, but you might want to reach out and do some other activities as well. So you can go through our, uh, universe of stories, clearinghouse collection, find a lot of really great, um, activities. And here's what I asked you to do. Do you see like how some of these have reviews, but they don't have a lot of reviews. It's just one. That one's a four star. Um, when you go, and uh, check out an activity. So this is the one I'll talk about in just a little bit, Strange New Planet. So you click on that button to check it out and then you can go down, you can read the reviews. If you do an activity, please, please, please write a review. Um, that's so helpful for everybody. And so I can read that, let's see, Heather Beverly adapted the activity and she had the children pretend to be astronauts. Um, so anyway, yeah, you can go through, you can read the reviews to get good ideas, but like it does, it's a community. So we need everybody to participate. Um, I think that's gonna be about it for the clearinghouse. Uh, a lot of these activities have how-to videos associated with them. The how-to video for this one's really good too. And some of them have a teacher's guide or a facilitator's guide, which is kind of like a more simplified version um, of the activity or the teacher's guide might have like uh, learning objectives. Um, so anyway, there's a lot to explore there, but the two things to do are, are to go check out the Universe of Stories Clearinghouse collection, and then you can just browse through all the activities and find ones that you like. I'm sure I missed like 10 things I wanted to talk about about the clearinghouse, but um, I did also want to share an example uh, program with you all. So I was just kind of thinking like, um, you know, if you're new to STEM and you're like, how does this all work? Like, I want to have a, a, a big program, um, but I don't really know how to do this. Let's see if I can pull up the right slide. Yeah, so I kind of put together just a little something. If I were going to do an example STEM programming, uh, and I wanted to do one right away, so the Mars InSight lander is going to land on Mars on November 26th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Now, they will be live streaming it, but I don't really know what that entails because I imagine there's not a camera on the lander. I'm not totally sure, but I'm sure it'll be really um, awesome because NASA TV really puts out great content. So I was thinking if I was going to do a program about this, it's going to be live. It's going to be during the day, it could get a lot of excitement, especially towards the end of the day, kids coming out of school. Um, how would I do that? And I thought, well, I would want to build some hype for it first, right? I'd want to get people interested in Mars. Um, so I would contact my local astronomy club, um, whether that was through the Night Sky Network or whether I just had a really good pre-existing relationship. I had a friend that was an astronomy professor and wanted to come bring his telescope. Uh, having your patrons look at a telescope, even if they're just looking at the moon, if they're looking at stars, if they're identifying planets, it sparks so much curiosity. Um, I always tell the story, I was walking around my neighborhood right after I started this job, and this lady was uh, out in her yard with a telescope, and she was like, 
hey, do you want to come look at the moon with me? And I thought, well, this is kind of weird, but I guess I do work for the Space Science Institute. I went over there, looked at the moon with her, and just was completely in awe. It had been forever since I just looked at the moon with a telescope. Um, so hosting a star party or a moon observation party is a great way to get a lot of interest. Um, the next thing you're going to do is watch our recording of our Off to Mars webinar. Uh, we had Dr. Steve Lee of the Denver Museum of Nature and Science come and talk about Mars, uh, talk about the Mars InSight lander. So you really don't need to know a ton of facts to, to do a, a good program, but it is helpful, you know, uh, to throw out one or two really interesting facts um, uh, to, to answer a question or to impress the kids or, or to spark some curiosity. Um, the next thing you would do, um, you know, and I've put this link in here, I don't think we're going to have time to, to go through that video, uh, but find a good video that's like one or two minutes long. Anything longer is not going to captivate your kids um, or your patrons, I should say, um, and that's geared for your patrons as well. So a video that shows engineers in action, um, a, video, a video that shows, um, I don't know, uh, some of the cool instrumentation uh, on top of the, on the Mars lander. Um, I did put some links in that link bank that um, was distributed out. Uh, so you can check those out. And lastly, I would uh, facilitate one or two activities depending on how long your day is. Uh, so one of those is Mars engineering. And Mars engineering, we highlighted it on our last webinar. Um, so you can go and find the recording if you wanna see that. Uh, and it's basically, you create a little tiny rover um, that then needs to go and pick up a rock. Uh, so it's just a fun engineering activity. The cool thing about Mars engineering, let's see, yeah, you can see the little rover, um, is that you can use pretty much anything. So you don't really, you might need to buy some materials, but for the most part, it's just stuff that you might have in your closet. At the, yeah, so here's the engineering, or here's the materials list. So a whole lot of different things that you can just pull uh, from a supply closet. But there's another fun one, Strange New Planet, which I just showed you all. And there is an amazing how-to video that our friends at the Lunar and Planetary Institute did for this. Um, and if you want to see it facilitated in action, there's webinar recordings of us, of us doing this. But Strange New Planet is, if you'll hold on just one second. Thank you, Greg. Strange New Planet, uh, the idea behind it is that you are creating, I'll go ahead and stop sharing this. You're creating a, your own planet. Um, as you can see, it's quite strange. Uh, using, we used felt for this one and we used a lot of like modeling clay, okay? So uh, you're modeling different NASA exploration techniques, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this strange new planet from Earth and we're gonna try to get an idea of what's on this planet. Is there anything valuable here? Are there other life forms on this planet? Uh, does it have water? Like, you know, kind of get your questions ready. Uh, then have your patrons, um, the first step, and I'm not gonna walk through the whole activity again, but this is kind of fun to mimic looking out through Earth's atmosphere. So your patrons will have their telescope, right? You can get some blue cellophane or like blue bubble wrap and you can uh, rubber band it on. So you have your patrons look far away at your strange new planet. They try to make different observations, but it's hard because we have the, you know, uh, scattering from our atmosphere. So then we're gonna get a little bit closer for our next step. We'll take our atmosphere out. That'll represent, you know, a telescope outside of the atmosphere. Then we'll get closer and we'll orbit around uh, then eventually they're getting right up to the planet to mimic like a lander and they can even take a sample out of the planet. Um, so it's a long, well, it's not that long. You can make it as long as you want, uh, but it's a really great activity that models that NASA exploration and why NASA decides to send a lander or a orbiter or uh, a mission that's doing a flyby. Oh yeah, you're right, Kayla. Um, I would, Kayla was just saying for the Mars rover one, I would challenge the kids to make something like that other than using the styrofoam cup. Um, I think if you look at the, the webinar that we did uh, a few weeks ago, we made it out of like a cliff bar wrapper and like some wine corks or, or whatever. So yeah, I would definitely do that as well. Uh, but yeah, again, that activity is strange new planet. It's in your link bank. Um, I realize that's I'm not really facilitating it for you all right now, but there is a great how-to video, um, and you can email me for more information on that awesome activity. Seriously, one of my favorites. Okay, so I, for our last 10 minutes, um, Luke suggested this. Uh, one of my coworkers suggested this. We have everybody here. We have 106 people and then 75 on YouTube Live right now. So I wanted to actually get some ideas and get some feedback from you all. Um, we are in this great position where NASA is very, very, very excited about the 2019 summer reading theme. Uh, and they are funding us uh, to kind of help libraries um, do uh, get trained and, and feel like they're confident facilitators. Um, 
So I just wanted to ask a few questions and kind of get an idea so we can help develop our strategy. Um, so for me and you know even Luke at CSLP, um, so just want to ask you a few questions. If you want to put this in the chat box, what are you most nervous about and what are you the most excited about um, for the 2019 summer reading theme? So again, the question is, what are you nervous about and what are you excited about for the 2019 summer reading theme? Okay, so nervous about trying to make learning about space digestible and fun for children. So Tracy, I guess you're kind of saying like, it's such a big, very, very complex subject. Um, so how could, yeah, right, right. So I would say find, um, find the most accessible thing for that age group. So whether it's, you know, you don't have to learn about the specific types of uh, plasma in the, I'm just making stuff up right now, um, but you can just talk to, you know, your lesson for a kid, or I hate to use a uh, lesson, uh, might be as simple as a scale activity. So realizing that we are very, very, very far away uh, from the sun. Um, so I think there are different tiers of complexity that you can teach about space science. Uh, you might not want to teach again about like electromagnetism, um, but you can model how a solar eclipse works. And that's a pretty simple thing. So I think finding your comfort level and also knowing that you won't have all the answers. Um, I have a science background and I can't answer most of the questions I'm asked about space because you know there's, it's so big and there's so many kind of crazy questions. And I'm just gonna scroll up and try to find all of these. Sorry, bear with me. And I might not get to every question, uh, but again, you can feel free if it's something, you know, Actually, even if it's very abstract, I'd love to I'd love to answer it or get a conversation going. Most nervous about finding presenters for our area, um, Alicia. So, and I know in the in the Southwest it is more difficult because we're farther apart. There are great uh, you know NASA resources, especially like up in the Arizona State area. I don't really know where you are located to them, but I hope um, through going through our partnerships website that we could um, that you could find somebody that would. Um, work in the Night Sky Network or Solar System Ambassadors. I'm excited about using the new, oh, good. Um, Becca, I'll put my email in the chat box. It's bmitchell at spacescience.org. I feel like everybody probably has it in their inbox a hundred times from all my emails before the webinar. Um, I was nervous about, do, about what to do for programming and now I'm very excited about contacting astronomy clubs for help. Um, oh, good, Tanya. Yeah, we're, um, I think the eclipse kind of got us on the map. Uh, she's saying that our organization is new to her. Um, but yeah, we do have a ton of, again, and it's, it's all free, um, great resources for you all. Excited about all the possible STEAM applications. So yeah, bringing art in, bringing art as that common ground. Everybody likes to do an art project. Um, and then from there, building on different STEM concepts. Making sure that all age groups are included and entertained, not just informed. That's right. So yeah, it is kind of education versus entertainment sometimes in informal science education, but there is a way to blend those, I think. Um, and I would, you know, as a librarian or somebody working in the library staff, I would err on the size, side of entertainment and hoping to get some educational in. So if they are coming in just to do a craft and to make a CD Saturn or something like that, um, then that's great. And if you can introduce any concepts from there. <laughs> Jennifer says, I didn't have any outside presenters at all for six weeks. I cannot do that again. I'm nervous about finding programs or activities that'll keep the kids attention. So I think this is a good activity or a good theme um, to keep patrons on track, you know, because it is really exciting for them. And there are different tiers of complexity, like I said. Um, let's see. Excited to introduce a new subject to the youngest minds. Wonderful. Oh, Paula, you're excited about borrowing lunar disk samples. That's right. Um, nervous about finding presenters and volunteers for programming. It's so one interesting thought. My, uh, somebody said they were nervous that their ambition is gonna um, exceed their actual capacity. 
making displays that would be interesting throughout the summer. So Aaron, um, and this is from YouTube Live, I want to say maybe Aaron Livingston. Um, so she's, he or she says they're nervous about making displays that would be interesting throughout the summer and not repetitive. So we actually work with a um, somebody, a researcher that has done this at her local library. She's created these displays and she keeps it interesting by keeping it really interactive. So by uh, asking a poll question, like one of the ones I asked you all and having patrons come up and place a dot on where they think the correct answer is, it's also an easy way for her to, um, to check how many people have come and visited her, her display. Um, so I think having something that changes just a little bit every week, maybe you have a display and there's a little tiny chalkboard that you can write do, uh, new things on. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next question. Um, and these are also, guys, if you didn't get a chance to answer or I didn't answer in the chat box, these will be on the post webinar survey. And Greg, if you wouldn't mind putting the survey monkey link in the chat box for everybody. Um, yeah, so the next one is which program do you need the most assistance with? I think I'll know the answer for this one. Um, so early childhood, children, teen or adult? We have so much trouble getting teens into the library. That's what I was thinking. And Luke and I talked about um, doing, you know, maybe I'll do a, a webinar specifically on teen and adult activities or um, teen ways to get teens into the library and do teen programming. Um, one thing that I've read a lot about, and I'm sure you all, I'm, you know, telling you something you already know, but yeah, that three to five range, that's where everybody hits, but everybody else gets left out. Um, having a teen advisory board uh, where they are planning the programming. And usually you do that, like the teens are planning the program, programming for younger kids or younger patrons. Uh, but if you have teens plan programs, even for older patrons, like what do you think the adults will think is are fun? Um, that's a good chance to kind of get them, get them really thinking. Yeah, Tracy, a teen advisory group. And I'm not saying that's, you know, the catch all answer, but um, definitely a good way to get them involved. Okay, so teens and adults, and this will be again in the survey afterwards. So if you could um, relay that there, teens and adults. Thank you, Greg. Okay, well, we'll look um, to doing some more. Is there a teen focus group study that we could all benefit from? Hey, Joel, I did a little research uh, myself on different teen advisory groups and like some different case studies of that. If you want to send me an email, I'm happy to send you um, a big kind of summary report I did on that. Um, and, it, and it kind of goes through different, yeah, different case studies of teens and advisory groups. Okay, I'm gonna get to another question here. I already asked this already, um, but if you've planned any, and I realize we're past the hour, I hope, you know, if you're still around, I assume you don't have a circulation desk to go run off to. Have you planned any programs already? If so, please share. So, and this is, uh, I mean, 2019 summer reading theme programs. Yeah, Kevin, absolutely. End of SR Glow in the Dark. Glow in the Dark Party for Teens sounds pretty fun. Nice. Swim Under the Stars. That sounds awesome. Awesome module based on the. Lisa, we have an activity um, like that on our clearinghouse. I forget the exact name of it. It might be Mission to Mars, but yeah, that's a fun one. Mary, those are like my three favorite movies that you just named. So please invite me to that program. Nice, Joyce. Joyce says she's collaborating um, with the local astronomy club. So they'll do a star party or two. They seem a little intimidating, the star parties, but they're really, it's not that hard if you have a good partner. Yeah. The member of the blank park zoo coming in with animals in a space team. Susan, could you elaborate on that? You said you have a member of a local zoo coming in with animals and a space theme. Um, what does that entail? How do they tie the animals together with space?
while I'm waiting to. Oh, very cool, Michelle. Out of this world adaptations. That's awesome. Very cool. It's pretty cool reading about all the animals that have been in space. Um, and I was surprised to find out most of them, especially now as, you know, technology has progressed to make it back to Earth safely and go live happy lives somewhere else. Um, I don't think that was the case in the 50s and 60s, but so Jennifer says uh, she's doing a glow party space themed craft day. Jennifer, check out the Make a CD Saturn. That's a really fun craft. Wow. You got a and a secret finale that will rock their world. Also, awesome. Very cool. Okay, I'm gonna go on to our last and most important question. Um, so, as I mentioned, we're working closely with NASA on this. Um, I like that idea, Joel. Joel, um, and I think some of our staff is going to meet with them next week or in two weeks. Two weeks from now. Um, and it's a chance to bring uh, things to NASA and saying, hey, look, we've talked to our library staff, our, um, our partners, and these are what they say, this is what they say that they want. Um, whether that's more library friendly activity guides, whether that's uh, media resources like um, informational videos, or maybe videos with uh, people on the space station, um, whether that's programming ideas, I don't know, what if you could have a chat with NASA and they said, hey, we wanna help you with your 2019 summer programming, how would you respond? What kind of things, um, what kind of resources would you like from them? I know bookmarks are always kind of like, eh, everybody has bookmarks, but, oh, that's awesome. Summer reading list compiled by astronauts. That's awesome, I would love that idea. Um, so Michaela, probably not exactly what you're thinking of, but I did include, I believe, links to the NASA TV schedule. Um, so for the next live downlink that they do, um, you can go check and, and view that with your patrons. And it's usually at a pretty good time. You really can't get enough activity guides to help make ideas more feasible. I don't know when I'm writing this down when I will just download the chat box afterwards, but. Activity guides, activity guides, programming ideas, activity guides. I have teacher, for, so this is Joyce. And Joyce, I don't think everybody else saw this. You just sent it to the panelists. Um, I have teacher friends who have received on-site training at NASA in Houston, would like them to extend that training to librarians. Very interesting. Would love to get a nice speaker here. Deborah says activity guides, program ideas with the info already researched for me. How to craft videos, short fun videos. Um, Michelle, uh, Luke, I'm not sure if you're still on, um, but if you are, Michelle was asking about, uh, I think it was a book about inventions used in space becoming everyday products. Um, and I don't know if you're, if you're still on, would you mind sharing what that was? <clears throat> I wish I, I, I had just pulled that from the, I got kind of an advanced copy of the manual to kind of go through and, and putting together this presentation, that one caught my eye. So it was in the adult summer reading manual. Okay. Um, there were a list of, of, I think they used books and some web resources to kind of as suggestions to pull those out. Um, so they were in there, but I don't, I don't know what page number it was on. <laughs> so yeah, Michelle, that's gonna be in the adult um, programming manual. That was our poll question last time was about which of these uh, inventions did NASA not invent? And it was actually Velcro. NASA did not invent Velcro. NASA reading incentives for free or purchase for low cost. So Michelle, when you say NASA reading incentives, are we thinking like stickers, pencils, bookmarks, those kinds of things? Or down links. Oh, that's cool, Brianna. That might be what, um, or that would be a helpful helpful game. So uh, Brianna, or Brianna, sorry, said that she played a game on the NASA Kids Club website and had a guessing game for everyday, everyday items inspired by NASA products. That's That could be a pretty passive thing that, that your patrons would enjoy. 
NASA stickers are a hot item. Understood. Okay, so physical items. What are story times from space? Is that the space station people reading live? I'm not totally sure, Tanya. Our downlink that we did was asking the, the astronauts specific questions. And I forgot who brought up story times from space earlier. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure if that is an astro or a space station person, astronaut uh, reading live or not. That's a great question. Thank you for sharing that link, Brianna. Oh, it is. Okay, very cool. Awesome. And we are trying to also get um, high profile people, if you will, to do uh, some short informational, like kind of, I say hype videos for CSLP in the summer reading theme that you'll be able to uh, share with your patrons to get them really excited. Astronaut training cramp camp with program ideas on exercises. Okay, so Michelle Barrett, um, that is an activity that we have uploaded. I believe it's called Train Like an Astronaut. Um, so it's not you know, a full-fledged program, um, but it is a specific activity. Um, and on NASA Wavelengths, they have a full, like much more detailed, where um, you can do, you can do like the, some of the activities or some, you know, you're modeling basically what astronauts have to do to stay fit. What items can't work in space? I'm going to stop sharing real quick. I'm just going to make sure we don't have a ton of questions in the, let's see. Yeah, it seems like people on YouTube Live are saying about the same thing. Activity guides, space station videos, stickers. Um, Stephanie Smith on YouTube Live, a lot of our activities on the STEM Activity Clearinghouse do have associated bibliographies with them. Um, so that is a good resource to check out. So um, you'll see that when you go to an activity, um, right underneath the activity description, there's a bibliography. So I'm seeing that it's not the actual incentives themselves. It's the fact that those incentives would come from NASA that would excite the kids. I like that. All right. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start kind of wrapping things up a little bit. Greg, would you mind putting in the Survey Monkey link and the link bank again for everybody? Um, and when I close out of here, you will be immediately redirected to the Survey Monkey. Um, let's see there. And any questions whatsoever, I'll go ahead and put my email in here one more time. It's bmitchell at spacescience.org. Um, and I anticipate uh, we'll be doing a lot more of these. I just kind of wanted to get a better hashed out idea of what you guys wanted before we scheduled our next webinar. But if it fills up as quickly as this webinar did, we won't have any problem. Yeah, Michaela, you can download the chat stream from the Zoom website. So what will happen after this webinar is over, I think it will automatically be uploaded um, to YouTube Live because it's on YouTube Live right now. Um, but the chat stream will be up in about a maybe a day or so. Um, and we'll have that linked on our StarNet website as well. Oh, Susan, um, yes, if you need a certificate of attendance, um, it is in the last, yeah, and you can also copy and paste the chat into a Word document, yeah. If you need a certificate of attendance, it is in the SurveyMonkey link. Um, I also, I can probably just put it in Greg, actually, if you have that, Greg, my email's not up. Would you mind putting that in the chat box, the certificate of attendance? I know, yeah. It looked like the YouTube Live had some good chats too. So we'll keep on doing that. We'll keep on broadcasting to YouTube Live and you can feel free to share that with everybody. Um, there's no attendee limit on that. Um, hey, Susan, if you want to, if you take the survey and you can get the certificate that way, it's on the last page of the survey. If not, um, you can email me and I'll, I'll happily get that sent out to you. Thanks, you like the gloves? Yeah, I just put those up there to make me look smart. All right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and close things out today. Thank you so much for all of you for joining all the great ideas. Thank you so much to Luke as well.
Thank you, everyone. And until next time, we're gearing up for conferences. So expect another webinar before the end of the year, I would say. Um, and any questions, please, yeah, please shoot me an email. I can redirect you to any of those resources we talked about today. So thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon.